portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Members from the Bahamas National Citizens for Coalition demonstrating against value-added tax. Now they took their protest to the streets today as a small group marched on Rawson Square. The group's executive chairman, Andrew Stewart, believes that the government's plan for the new tax regime was not well thought out and the public was not well informed. The BNC calls on all Bahamians who love their country to join us in opposing this tax. Those who are benefiting from the Bahamas should pay a fair tax as they do in other countries where they do business. The BNCC believes that Bahamians should be masters of their own country. The preamble of our Constitution, 1973, outlines a new vision for us as a people. Well, president of the group called Enough is Enough out of Uganda, Bahama, Kendall Colebrook, says value-added tax is nothing new to the region, but he feels that will do more harm than good. But if it has been a part of the Caribbean for over 50 years, here is the question you need to ask intelligent people. It has been a part of the world system since World War II. It has never paid down the debt ever in any country. Let me put this to you lightly. It has never paid down the principal on any debt. I want you to understand there is something called the economic hitman. Our governments, they are not making these decisions. But we as a people can stand up if we do one thing that the rest of the Caribbean didn't do. Governments in black nations, they don't ever teach their citizens their constitution. Well, poor security at the Linden Pinling International Airport getting a boost as recruits have completed the necessary training to work at the facility. The 24 students received their certification during a ceremony yesterday. Chimanita Swain was there. A proud moment for 24 graduates who will now serve as security and passenger screeners at the Linden Pinling International Airport. The screeners play a critical role in protecting the port from any threats. Minister of Transport and Aviation Glenis Hannah Martin told graduates that they will play an integral role in protecting the nation's border by scrutinizing with the highest precision. You're a bright group of young people. You're, import you're going to perform an important function not just in a facility, but in a nation. And the, the, the border protection is not just for who um, leaves to go to another country, but you're also involved in security internally. And so who goes from here to Andros or Exum or, or Grand Bahama? And, um, and so, you know, your task is, is extremely important. Airport Authority General Manager Milo Butler III said there were about 150 applicants. However, it was narrowed to the 24 graduates. He encouraged them to take their responsibility seriously. The challenge moving forward for this group is for each of you to make a personal commitment to ensure that each day you perform your duties with integrity, honesty, and decorum as you interact with the traveling public and your fellow officers. We will always bear in mind that we are to dispatch our duties fairly and in a professional and courteous manner. The graduates completed a brief play on the proper way screeners should address passengers and graduate Robin Stirrup gave a response on behalf of the group. They were each presented with their certificates. I am elated to say the long study hours, daily exams and drills are over. Though overwhelming and intense, our training equipped us with the knowledge and skills that has prepared us for our assigned duties with confidence, dependability, honesty, and integrity. We are ready to demonstrate techniques learned and put into action the information, procedures, and policies, taking aviation security to a higher level. The airport authority plans to have an additional training exercise, and when it does, it expects to dispatch senior officers to expand the canine dog detection unit, enhance its closed circuit television unit, and expand on its behavioral detection unit. Jiminita Swain, ZNS Network News.
Well, we may need to promote sports tourism to top-level basketball teams, it seems, after the Kentucky basketball team spent almost $1 million when the team played here eight days over the summer. A newspaper is reporting that the team spent $800,000 in expenses, including a $1,500 a night luxury suite for the head coach. The team said the suite was needed as the room doubled as a meeting space. Most of the cost, though, came as the team paid for the hotel and food for the national teams from the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, as well as a French professional team. This cost was defended on the grounds that Kentucky needed to play high-level teams. It seems the school also spent $24,000 to fund a reception for the teams, including an open bar. It's not clear if players drank despite the legal drinking age being 18 here in the Bahamas as opposed to 21 in the United States. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it.